And our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. I'm very grateful to be a member of this church and to be able to have Christian science with me each day. This past Saturday, my practitioner let me know that she felt we should now place the English text alongside each of the lesson sermon translations we have each week, as this is what Mary Baker Eddy had done with the first German translation of Science and Health. I had already felt led a few months ago to write little programs to take each week's lesson text and add it to that certain language's lesson template. This has helped me to reduce any confusion each week, especially with the foreign languages. And so when my practitioner gave this new direction, the thought immediately presented itself that it would only take a little bit of work to rewrite those programs, to simultaneously take each citation of the translation and compile it next to the appropriate English citation. So this is what has me so grateful this week. God continues to give me all I need in order to do this work. And it's such a blessing how all these little ideas are then ready to expand as the need arises. I'm very grateful to God, to this church, and to my practitioner for all that is continually provided to keep my thought active and ready for what, whatever God would have me do next. It is wonderful to be here doing this work. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for those readings tonight. Tonight I want to express my gratitude for the many lessons I am learning about Christly love and compassion at this church. This has been something that's been very needed, seeing as I tend to go off into human sympathy and pity, either for myself or others, which has uh, led to um, very unproductive, unhealing, and destructive behaviors, actually, sometimes. So I'm very grateful to be learning how to love as Christ instructed. I want to share my gratitude for a healing I had recently while working at church with a member. I was in pain, and so I just sit quietly for a little bit. I did mention I was uh, uncomfortable, and this member's expression was so loving, but her voice was so firm and with authority and said, no, God, good. Uh, this healing attitude immediately lifted my thought from this pain to God. And very shortly, the pain just lifted, and it did not return. And I think it was such a beautiful example of true compassion, where I felt the love, but there was a firmness, no sympathy, no empathy at all for the, the wrong, the pain. And uh, it was so uh, beautiful. And I'm also very grateful for all that I'm learning from my practitioner, who continually presents this example of true love and empathy and kindness, but firmness and strength and no nonsense with the air. And it's one of the first things that drew me to this church, actually. And I was, uh, wanted to add, I was able to finish the work that I needed to do. And um, that uh, expression and those words stayed with me for a while for a couple days, and I was able to turn to them and use them as an example. I'm very grateful for Christ Jesus, for Mrs. Eddy, who sacrificed so much to give us this science, and for this church teaching it and living it correctly. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening. And thank you for the readings about Mrs. Eddy and her textbook during this most holy week. Tonight, I also offer my gratitude for the performance of the song, He Touched Me, sung by Sammy, Bryce, Craig, played by Jared, and sung by Jared and Bruce last Sunday. 
The music at the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent transcends the human experience to holy realms where the word of God is heard and understood. Mrs. Eddy said, quote, Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth or love, be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. End quote. That's Science and Health, page 234. And thank you for the hymns. Thank you. Betty. Betty from California. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, one morning, several weeks ago, I woke up and found my knee to be very painful. I read my lesson and did my watch as usual, and it was still kind of painful. A bit later, I started working on the computer on one of the full-text lessons that I helped work on, and suddenly I remembered a statement out of an article called Fidelity in Miscellaneous Writings by Mary Baker Eddy, which says, quote, Too soon we cannot turn from disease in the body to find disease in the mortal mind, and it's cure in working for God, unquote. Well, I laughed out loud. And thanked God for this reminder message. Needless to say, the knee was much better after I got done working uh, on my computer time. And the pain went away as the day went on. And so by the end of the day, it was completely gone. I'm so very grateful for the Plainfield Church Independent and for practitioner help. And thank you for the readings tonight. Thank you. This is Bruce. I also would like to add my thanks for the readings that were given, which is the reminder that there was something very sacred that happened some time ago. Mary Baker Reddy received this revelation, this final revelation of truth, and wrote the book Science and Health. And as proof of its Authorship being really divine, she claimed that she was like a scribe under orders, didn't know what she was reading, but was writing as fast as she could as soon as the ideas came. I, I stand in awe of it. But I also would like to add my thanks tonight for the fact that we have Christian Science and we all have this church here in Plainfield. I don't know where I would be without it. I'm, I'm sure that I would be lost somewhere, s struggling and not seeing, not seeing the light at all. Uh, this church has meant so much to me. I mean, this is where the true idea of Christian science is being preserved at this point in time. And for me, it's done immense amount of good for my life, and I'm endlessly thankful for it. Craig. Thank, thank. I think the readings, they were uh, really in, enlightening and, and brought to by great gratitude for Mary Rick Reading what uh, well what really reenacted a revelation. It was so much love to her to after getting it to really work through it. And I came, it reminds me recently, it was refreshing to know that uh, she was given all the truth, Christian science, the comforter, that uh, good would always triumph. And I have to remind myself of that occasionally. Good will always triumph. You know, there are dark pictures that uh, I've seen, but then, if she had seen them, she would have applied the truth and known good will triumph. And it did. And it's been, uh, I remember in Jesus' Beatitudes, he basically, his admonition to the disciples, he says, you are the salt of the earth. 
But what good is the salt if lost its saltness, but to cast the earth and try it on the foot of men? And it wakes us that we've been given the salt and that we <laughs> need not let it fall to the ground and be cast, but to be assertive with it. And yeah, it was like a good between the readings and what I recently was thinking, a shot in the arm to just, you know, in no instance do we need to stand back when this, <clears throat> in the face of something wrong, but to affirm the truth and the good and expect it and see it. So I thank God for the change of attitude that we're, the fighting spirit and <clears throat> certainly triumphant, one that all those early disciples and Suzette students and us are given so that we, can, we will and we are effective. Thank you. Thank you. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. I was raised as an Episcopalian and I found Christian Science as an adult when looking for a Sunday school for our young son. And on the way to his preschool, we kept passing a Christian Science church. And since my mother always said that Christian Science has a wonderful Sunday school, we began attending. And once I read Science and Health, I knew I wanted to be a Christian scientist. But the practitioner with whom I had class instruction was rather difficult and somewhat insulting when I would try to ask questions. And then I tried a couple of other Christian science churches when we moved from Maryland, from Virginia to Maryland. But I was never able to get anywhere and actually fell into a severe depression and was hospitalized for clinical depression three different times. And when I was home the last time, I searched the web looking for something or anything about Christian science. And I happened to find Plainfield and a phone number. And my practitioner today answered the phone at that time. And immediately I found what I was looking for, and my life quickly turned around. I can never be grateful enough for Plainfield because it actually saved my life. And I'm so grateful to God. I'm grateful to Mrs. Eddy. And thank you so much for the wonderful readings tonight that are so helpful. Gary, on Mrs. Eddy and this wonderful science. Thank you. Edith. Edith from California. Go ahead. Thank you. I am thankful for these Wednesday meetings. Um, I always look forward. Every week I look forward to these meetings on Wednesdays. It's such a treat for me. And I'm also very thankful because the Plainfield Christian Science Church offers information about watches. I believe that this practice is so helpful. I appreciate the emails that I receive about the watches. I appreciate the wonderful information provided in each email. And I appreciate the opportunity um, in participating in the watches. Um, it's such a wonderful experience. I um, I noticed that at first uh, when I started, um, I was struggling a little bit, but now I notice that I notice that it's, I'm improving and it's just such a beautiful experience. I am doing my own individual individual watches, and I'm very grateful for this. I am just learning this, and and I'm already seeing so many wonderful changes in my life. I am. Uh, I thank uh, everyone in the church for this, and thank you so much for this uh, meeting tonight and the readings and the music. Um, I appreciate you all, and I hope you all have a lovely evening. Thank you. Lil. I am very grateful for recent practitioner help. I have a couple of issues that need to be re resolved that will take a little time to work out. Practitioner knew that I was not staying peaceful about them and reminded me to trust God 
that he is working everything out to trust God. She suggested that I write down that statement, trust God, on some cards and place them around my home as powerful reminders. This has been so helpful in keeping God foremost in all that I think, do, and say. I thank God for the many wonderful healings I've had since coming to this church, and I thank practitioner for strong, loving support. And I'm so grateful for those wonderful readings. Thank you. Thank you. Luba. Luba from Ohio. Go ahead. I'm so grateful for how my life and thinking has changed since coming to Plainfield. My understanding of Christian science has increased through all I'm learning here. I know we must wait on God to provide all answers, being patient and persistent as we seek what he has planned for us. Last weekend, I was out. It was a beautiful sunny day. I stopped at a store, and while in there, I had this urgency to leave suddenly. I came outside, and there were very dark clouds overhead in all directions. I drove home so quickly and pulled into the garage just as extreme winds began to blow and as torrential downpours came down. I was so grateful to, be, to God to be safely home. I learned later that much damage had occurred with widespread power outages, but nothing in the immediate area was damaged. I'm so grateful for God's ever-present protection and for listening to his voice. I'm grateful to Christian Science, this church, to my very loving practitioner who has taught me so, so much and is always there for me. And thank you for tonight's reading, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Amanda. Amanda from Missouri. Go ahead. Thank you. Gary, thank you for the readings tonight about Mrs. Eddy and her discovery, and I felt inspired as a result of them to testify to the healing that resulted in Christian science coming to our family. In the 1920s, my dear grandmother Nan was recently widowed by her first husband, and she was left at the start of the Depression with three little girls, my aunties, to care for. And at that time, to be a single woman with children during the Depression was difficult enough. And then she was taken quite ill with what was diagnosed as pernicious anemia, which at that time of the day was a fatal diagnosis. And she managed to go see a doctor who told her there was nothing that could be done for her. But this dear man led her to a corner of his office and pointed out the window. And he pointed to a building and said, I don't know what happens there, but these people have a book. And I send my patients there when I can't help them, and they read this book, and somehow they get better. And so she went there, and it turned out to be a reading room, and she was able to get a copy of the book. It was a great expense to her at the time, but she did. And she was healed of this, what was then fatal disease, by reading our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mrs. Eddy. She went on to be here with us for about 60 years or more after that, and she would go on to heal her father of a diagnosis of stomach cancer that was deemed fatal by his doctor. And she also overcame the claim of death herself when she was declared deceased as a result of childbirth in the 1940s when delivering my mother. This is a beautiful proof I feel so blessed to be able to share and a demonstration of the magnificence of the gift that Mrs. Eddy, the revelator to this age, has given us. I'm so very grateful to her and to this church and the practitioners. And I thank you so very much to everyone participating in tonight's service. And Gary, thanks again for those readings. Thank you. Yeah. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. <clears throat> thank you very much for this service tonight and for the wonderful readings um, on Mrs. Eddy. It really shows the standing and the prophecy that we can we find the importance and the significance of these great truths. Um, I am so grateful for all the avenues in this church that were given to learn and understand more and more. I've 
been in science many years, but I'm learning so much now with all the things that were given. In the round table on Sunday, there was I wrote down the sentence that was from Herbert Eustace. It, it is, quote, Matter held as shadow is the idea of God, but matter held as substance is a belief and error, end quote. Um, that really made an impression on me, and I've worked with it, and it makes so much sense and gives so much freedom. So I, I, want, I am very grateful for that. Also, I'm very grateful for the Bible studies. I, I can't express enough gratitude for everything that I've learned and been able to put into practice and share with others that we, look, we learn in these Bible studies. And for the questions that come out every week that we work with before the Bible study on Saturday, I'm very grateful for the ones this week. And the last question that was asked, about um, what Jesus said his, to his disciples. And it made me think about, you know, that he was reprimanding them for not believing that he had ascended when others told them that he had. And it really drew, drew me up, and um, I had to really think about it and test myself and, and say where I was and what am I doing I am so grateful because these things make our lives and our work so much better and joyful and rich, and I thank you so much. Thank you. Benjamin. Thank you. Um, and also, I'm very grateful to hear the reading tonight. Um, it's about how, um, what God has given to us, the gift of Christian science. Um, today, I was thinking about how God has you know, given me the privilege, the gift of finding Christian science. Um, in what I would, what I'd like to th think as an extraordinary circumstance or event, it wasn't my own doing, or it wasn't my own um, uh, education or something of that nature, but because. I was in a situation where I had to, you know, pray to God and say, God, not my will, but your will be done. And God's will was done. Christian science or Christ has always been there, always available. And it's always been found by as many as willing to look for it, open their heart. It's always be within our reach. History, as we heard tonight, and we have heard every day, every service in this church, is filled with stories of people who have found God in extraordinary circumstances or situations. Um, the Bible is full of these stories. A woman who was suffering from issue of blood for 12 years, and there were thousands of crowds surrounding Jesus Christ, but she was able to find her way through and touch the hem of his cloth. A man who couldn't find somebody to take her to the stream, and the spirit stirred the water, but he'd been there for, I believe the Bible said more, about more than 10 years or 20 years, I don't know exactly, but he was able to find Christ. A family who have to trust a family member through the roof so that he can find Christ. A beggar who was sitting down on the roadside and thousands of crowds were surrounding Jesus Christ, but 
he has the strength and will to call on Jesus, son of David. He heard him. And there are so many stories like that. A man is not different. It was in a time when I wasn't even, I mean, I was nobody. But I found Christ and he brought me to this church, made it possible for me to be standing here tonight. I'm so grateful for what God has done for me. Because like Bruce said um, a while ago, I shared the same story that without Christian science, I, I was nobody. But with God and what he has done for me through this church, he had made me who he want me to be. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon. Last year, I woke up on a Tuesday with a cold, and I worked and prayed, and it went away. On Wednesday, I came down with a cough, and I thought, I better get practitioner help, because tonight's a service, and I don't want to uh, interrupt the service with coughing. And I called the practitioner, told her the story, and she said, well, if it wasn't true yesterday, it's not true today. That was the end of the cough. <laughs> well, about a week ago, a cold tried to come, and that was the first thought that came to me. And I thought, God never made it, so no one has to have it. I'm just so grateful for how practical Christian science is and for practitioner help and all that we're learning in this church. And I'm so grateful for the wonderful readings tonight. And thank God that he gave us Christian Science, Mary Baker Reddy, and this church. Thank you. Mary. Good evening, everyone. I first have an email from England. I'm most grateful for the Bible study and round table of last weekend, particularly the discussion of honor thy father and thy mother and everyone's helpful comments. I've been trying to follow the advice about thinking about my parents, that they did the best they could at the time. I've also been trying to devote time to be still and to know that I am God. Following your discussions about Revelation, I discovered on your website a link to the book Revelation Interpreted by Reverend Kratzer, some of which I have now read and found so interesting. For this week's responsive reading from Revelation, there are some helpful notes on pages 359 and page 121 of this book relating to these verses. I am very grateful for Plainfield services and study sessions and for all the information provided and all the efforts and dedication of the church members with much gratitude and love. And Virginia, I have been completely taken aback with this week's lesson sermon on Doctrine of Atonement. It is so powerful, consistent in the message, step by step from the golden text to the very end. It just lifts you up with each progressive step, citation. It is an incredible lesson sermon in explaining atonement. I've never cried at the end of a lesson sermon before, but I did with this one, and they are tears of love and gratitude for this beautiful Easter gift from God to man. In Canada, I am grateful for the audio rendition of the hymns that can be heard on the website of the Plainfield Church Independent. For me, they provide a glorious opportunity not only to listen and sing along, but also to learn those I am not too familiar with, and so be able to join in later when they are sung during a Sunday service or a Wednesday evening meeting. The lyrics of the hymns not only are a blessing to us, but we can use them in our prayers for our family, our friends, our community, and for the whole world. 
The hymns are holy, and they bring us healing, comfort, joy, gladness, and above all, a peaceful sense of closeness and nearness to the great heart of God. With much gratitude and love. And then from our church website, Bulletin Board, Illinois. I am so grateful for God's direction. Before tonight's testimony meeting, that was last week's, I had an unpleasant encounter with a warranty company which I had just begun to do business with. Entering into a contract with this company was a result of listening to the still small voice, so I did not understand why this unpleasant encounter was happening. After I concluded my conversation with the company, I decided not to take any action until after tonight's meeting, knowing that God would send the appropriate message. The last testimony read at the end of the service from France covered the situation that mortal mind was presenting to me. Mortal mind was attempting to get me to believe that this company was not operating above board, and that cannot be true since God is all power and all things emanate from him. I was so grateful to hear what I need, that I needed to give this situation to God and to know that his will be done. This brought a great sense of peace, and I know when I contact the company tomorrow, the actions will bless all involved. I am so peaceful and grateful. And this from Florida. I want to thank you for your online bookstore, stocked with so many inspirational resources. This morning, I was guided to a book I purchased last year, The Blue Book, Notes on Mary Baker Eddy's Course in Divinity. On page 27, I read the following note, written on March 31, 1907. Since this is Holy Week, I wanted to share it. And this is Mrs. Eddy. Easter, Resurrection. We must be resurrected must put off the old man and put on the new. If you dress for Easter, your clothes are all in keeping, are clean. You do not put on some clean ones and some soiled ones. Neither can you put on part of the new man and part of the old. You must put on the whole of the new man, the spiritual idea. If you put a new patch on an old garment, you still have the old garment. There is a time when you take off your old garments before you put on the new. Now, if we patch up this body, try to make a better eye, a better limb, etc., we are not putting on the new. We want to say, I, you cannot talk to me. I have put you off. Rise to the spiritual sense. Then your body will respond. Then take no thought what ye shall eat, your clothes, etc. For your heavenly Father knoweth ye have need of these things. This is the resurrection. The resurrection is not to be resurrected from matter, dust. There never was any life in matter to be resurrected. The resurrection is seeing the real man that was never in matter. He never was sick to be made well. That is the way I did the healing. I never saw the material man before me, but the real man, perfect. And this healed instantaneously, and no relapse. This is the way Jesus healed, as in Signs and Health it reads, Jesus beheld the perfect man. This is the resurrection. So I thank everyone for their contributions this evening and for the beautiful readings about Mrs. Eddy and her textbook. It was read from Retrospection and Introspection. The miracles recorded in the Bible, which had before seemed to me supernatural, grew divinely natural and apprehensible through the uninspired interpreters ignorantly pronounced Christ's healing miraculous instead of seeing therein the operation 
of the divine law. I think one of the many things that have, has helped me in understanding Christian science better is to understand this, that it is a divine law. Just as in mathematics we have laws, these, these divine laws are operable and they're, they cover the whole universe, but we must align ourselves with these laws. And if we don't, we can't expect to have the results that we might desire. Mrs. Eddy named her science Christian science. She knew it was a science. She knew it was divine law. But she also knew it had to have the Christian part, the Christianity, the love. If you just have the law and the letter, she does say it can be cold. So therefore, it must have that love as well. And that combination is powerful because it is the truth with a capital T. It is something we can all learn. And as we study more and imbibe the Spirit and live it in our lives, the many questions we might have had about it dissipate and we get a much deeper understanding of this wonderful religion this wonderful way of life called Christian science. I'm so grateful to Mrs. Eddy for finding it for us, discovering it, being that scribe under orders, as was said tonight. I'm grateful for the beautiful hymns and to be together this holy time, this holy week. Thank you all. Thank you.